Hi everybody, Mike Brown here again. Welcome back to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop CS6 course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about something quite different. How to create a panorama with Photoshop. Now, a panorama by definition in the photo world is a series of images that encompass a much wider area than the camera can see in a single image. You can do this either horizontally or you can do it vertically for tall buildings as well, either way. We're going to talk about how to shoot these images properly so you're giving the computer the best quality images to get seamless stitching. And then we're going to talk about how to actually create that panorama with those sequenced images in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are my five points to ensure that you get the best quality images possible from your camera for the panorama. The first and foremost is to hold the camera steady without any change of tilt or rotation for each shot. Ideally, you'd put it on a tripod. That way, if it was sitting on a tripod, it can't move. It just rotates perfectly, either vertically or horizontally. That would give you absolutely the best image. If you can't use a tripod, do your utmost to make sure that every image has the same horizon, either vertically or horizontally. Secondly, overlap your images by between 30 and 50 percent, a considerable amount. You want to make sure that the computer has enough points of reference to line up to give a perfectly seamless stitch. That means give it at least 30 percent. Sounds like a lot, but you really want to make sure it has more than one point as a whole series. That's very important. Thirdly, use the same exposure for every image. Don't change the exposure as you're going through the sweep. And you're going to want to because if the, depending on where the sun is, and if you're shooting at least 180 degrees of um, panorama, it's going to be brighter on one side than the other because the sun's going to be direct, and on the other side it's going to be backlit. Don't compensate for this if at all possible because you want the computer to see a seamless transition. If you start trying to adjust each photo to be the perfect exposure, the edges won't match up exposure-wise. Same problem as with the overlap. So use the same exposure. Use the same zoom because, again, the images won't fit together in the computer properly if you have one image that's zoomed more than another. You want just a nice, seamless series of images that overlap properly with minimum uh, distortion. And finally, when you open the images up, if you do any correcting inside of Camera Raw and your image is either JPEG or RAW will inherently open in Camera Raw, make sure that you apply those changes <coughs> Excuse me. equally to every image by synchronizing before you open them up in Photoshop. Okay? Those are the five points.